guys, so a really common question that a lot of musicians ask when they're first sort of getting into jazz is, how do I know what scale to play over a particular chord? And so if you're given a um, chord progression that's in a specific key, why do you often hear that different jazz musicians use different scales over those same chords? And how do they pick those scales? Now in order to answer those questions, we need to differentiate between playing in a key and playing from a key. Now songs are generally written in a major or a natural minor key. The natural minor being a mode of the major scale anyway. So you generally don't see songs with a harmonic minor key signature or a whole tone key signature or weird things like that. But you can play scales and substitute in chords from a different key into a given song or chord progression. So if you have a song that's in the key of C major, you can still play scales and substitute in chords that are derived from a different key into that sort of C major chord progression or song. Now this will make more sense if we go through a simple example, so let's do that. Now let's take the chord C major 7, so we've got C, E, G and B. Now that chord can be derived from the C major scale, right, no sharps or flats, that's the one chord of the C major scale, so we start on the C and we build up in thirds, and we build a C major 7. The C major 7 can also be derived from a G major scale. So that has one sharp, the F sharp, and the C major 7 chord will be the 4 chord from the point of view of the G major scale or key. So starting on the C, again we build up in thirds, we get to the E, we skip the F sharp because we're building in thirds, get to the G, get to the B, and again we've got that C major 7 chord. So the C major 7 chord is both the one chord of the key of C major and the four chord of the key of G major. And obviously, as you can see, the reason that's the case is because all the notes from the chord C major 7 are in both the C major scale and the G major scale. The only difference is, of course, that the G major scale has the F sharp but that's not in the chord of C major 7, so it doesn't really affect C major 7, so we can sort of ignore that for the moment. So the chord C major 7 can be both in the key of C major and in the key of G major, and the way you determine which key it's actually in is by looking at the rest of the chord progression. So if, for example, we have a chord progression that goes D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7, that's quite obviously in the key of C major, because we've got that natural F. If, on the other hand, we had a chord progression that went D7, G major 7, C major 7, that chord progression is in the key of G major because we've got that F sharp. So let's go back to the 251 in the key of C major 7, so D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7. Now if you were playing a pop song, you would probably just use the C major scale to improvise over that entire chord progression. But the thing that makes jazz a bit more interesting and a bit more, dare I say, jazzy, is that you're allowed to play scales from a different key in, the, in that chord progression, even though the chord progression is in C major 7. So you could play something like this. Right, so over the D minor 7 and the G7, I was just playing the straight C major scale. Then when I got to the C major 7 chord, I started playing in the key of G major. inserting that F sharp. And so even though the chord progression is in the key of C major, if you take that C major 7 chord and look at it in isolation, because it can be derived from both the C major scale and the G major scale, you're actually allowed to play a scale from the key of G major or the G major scale over the top of that chord, despite the fact that all the other chords point to the fact that that C major 7 is technically in the key of C major, um, but in jazz you don't have to necessarily stick to that. It'll still sound good if you play 
G major over that one chord because that chord can be derived from G major. And incidentally, playing the G major scale over a C major 7 chord means you're technically playing the C Lydian mode. Which again, as a little aside, um, is the mode that was used a lot during the bebop era to avoid sort of the avoid notes. But again, that's sort of an aside. Now, in the same way that you can play the G major scale over the C major 7 chord, because you can derive the chord from the key of G major, um, you can do the same thing with chords. For example, if we take that same chord progression, the 2-5-1 in C major 7, ending that little chord progression on a C major 7 sounds a little bit boring. Instead, you could end that chord progression with a C major 9 sharp 11. And this is quite a common ending tonic chord because it adds a bit more color and texture to the chord that you're, to the chord progression, to the chord you're playing. Instead of just playing it, sounds a bit plain and boring, you go. And already you've got a little bit more harmonic intrigue and something that sort of sounds a little bit more out there and jazzy. And so as you can see, the sharp 11 there is the F sharp. And the F sharp is in the key of G. So that chord is technically in the key of G major. If you were to play a C uh, major 11 chord in the key of C major, you'd have the natural F, the natural 11. But F is a, a void note, so you generally don't see that because um, it sort of sounds unpleasant. Um, you generally see it sharpened. Because you're playing the F sharp, that means that chord is technically in the key of G major, but you've inserted it as the tonic chord, the final chord of a 2-5-1 progression in the key of C major. So again, you're playing in the key of C major, but you've put in a chord from the key of G major. Now this example used two major scales, but you can use scales and chords derived from completely different or completely other types of scales, like harmonic minor scales or whole tone scales or melodic minor scales, which um, melodic minor scales are used quite a lot in jazz and the modes of the melodic minor scale. And so my next video will be all about the modes of the melodic minor scale, because they are quite important to know when you're sort of trying to play jazz and trying to listen to jazz really. But so if we look at that same example, the C major 7 chord, the reason that works is because all the notes in the C major 7 chord are found both in the key of C major and in the key of G, ma G major. Therefore that chord fits perfectly. The root, the third, the fifth and the seventh can all be found in the C major scale and the G major scale and then any sort of different notes up here are just sort of extensions or alterations that kind of make this chord sound nice and different and jazzy and pleasant, um, but it doesn't really affect the quality of the chord. Because it's got the major third and the major seventh, it will still remain a C major seven chord, even if you put in a sharp 11. But you don't necessarily need all of the notes in a chord to be in a scale in order for that scale to fit over this chord. The most important notes in a chord are the 3rd and the 7th, that is the guide tones, and that's because they establish the quality of the chord, that is, is it a major, is it a minor, or is it a dominant 7 chord? And to a lesser extent, the root, which establishes the tonality of the chord, that is, this is a C major 7 chord. The 5th is not really important and doesn't really add anything to the harmony or to the chord. So you can, in effect, get rid of it or modify it without really affecting the quality of the chord too much, anyway. So if the notes of a particular scale include the root, the third, and the seventh of a particular chord, then you can use that scale over this particular chord. So for example, taking the C major seven, any scale that has the notes C, E, and B in the scale can be used over the top of a C major 7 chord. And so this idea can be applied more widely um, to scales and modes that you wouldn't typically find in sort of classical music. Like for example, if we take the chord C7, any scale that includes the C, the E, and the B flat 
can be used over the top of a C7 chord. So for example, the dominant bebop scale goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat, B, C. Now because that scale has the C, the E, and the B flat, you can use it over a C7 chord. Even though it also has the B, which is a major seven, that's kind of a passing note, it, it's incidental. It has these three notes, therefore you can use it over this chord. Or take, for example, the whole tone scale. If we play the whole tone scale from C, we get C, D, E, G flat, A flat, B flat. Now that scale has a, a C, an E, and a B flat in it. Therefore, you can use the whole tone scale over a dominant chord, over the C7 in this case. Now, some of you are probably thinking, what about the blues scale over a dominant chord? That has a minor third rather than a major third. And that's a really good point. So the next thing I'm going to say is that notes can be omitted or enharmonic. And enharmonic essentially means that one note has two names. This can be either a D sharp or an E flat. So a D sharp is enharmonically the same as an E flat. So let's take that same C7 and let's play a C altered scale over the top. Now a C altered scale or an altered scale is the seventh mode of a melodic minor scale and like I said earlier I'll cover melodic minor modes in a different video. But essentially, a C altered scale would have the root, then a flat 2, a flat 3, flat 4, flat 5, flat 6, flat 7, and then the root again. Now, if you were to just sort of look at that sc scale, prima facie, it looks like it has a flat 3rd and a flat 7th. So you would assume um, wrongly that it should be played over a C minor 7 chord, because it's got the flat 3 and the flat 7. However, that flat 3 is actually enharmonically the same as a sharp 2, which is also a sharp 9. So the flat 3 is actually a sharp 9, and the flat 4 is actually enharmonically the major 3rd. So we've got the root, we've got effectively a flat 9, a sharp 9, then the major 3rd, and we've got these notes, then the minor, the flat 7, and back again. So this scale, even though it has a flat 3rd, the flat 3rd is technically a sharp 9 or a sharp 2, and the flat 4 is actually the 3rd. So this scale can actually or should actually be, should actually be played over a dominant chord. And so now let's look at the C blue scale. We've got the root, the flat 3, 4, sharp 4, 5, flat 7, root. Now obviously because it's got that flat 3rd, you can play the blue scale over a C minor 7 chord and it sounds fine. Right, because the C blues scale is also more or less the same as the C minor pentatonic. So it makes sense that you can play it over a minor 7 chord. But again, if we think of that flat 3 as enharmonically the same as a sharp 2, or again, as a sharp 9, then suddenly we don't have a flat 3rd anymore, instead we have a sharp 9. And incidentally, the sharp 9 is a really, really bluesy note. Um, and Hendrix used it a lot, and I think it's actually referred to as a Hendrix chord in sort of the guitar world. A dominant sharp 9 chord. So then, now if we play the blues scale, we have the root, the sharp 2, or the sharp 9, 4, sharp 4, 5, flat 7. So we've got that flat 7, and we don't have a major 3rd at all. And that's perfectly fine. The fact that we're not playing it doesn't mean it doesn't sort of exist or it's not implied by the scale. Um, we're just kind of skipping it or omitting it. And that's why the blue scale fits over a dominant chord. Because even though it doesn't have the major third, it also doesn't have a minor third. It technically has a sharp nine. And so by now you would have hopefully understood that any scale that has a major 3rd and a major 7th can be played over a major 7 chord. Any scale that has a minor 3rd and a minor 7th in it can be played over the minor 7 chord. 
any scale that has a major third and a minor seventh can be played over a dominant chord. And sort of extending that, any scale that has a flat third, a flat fifth, and a flat seventh can be played over a half diminished chord. The flat fifth in this case being a bit more sort of important to the harmony of the chord because it's an altered fifth, it's not just a perfect fifth like it is with all the other chords. And so now if you have a look in the picture in picture here, you'll see a list of scales that you can use over each chord type. Now this list isn't exhaustive, there are far far more scales that you can use over particular chords. And I'm not going to go through every single one of these in details here, because I don't want to just state them. Um, I want to show you how they're actually derived, so that you understand where they came from and how to think about them. And then you'll sort of be able to use them a bit more sort of knowingly, knowledgeably, um, and hopefully a bit more sophisticatedly. But essentially over a major 7 chord you can use the Ionian mode, the Lydian mode, or the Lydian augmented mode, which again is a mode of the melodic minor scale, which I'll go over in my next video, or the major bebop scale. Over a minor 7 chord you can use the Aeolian mode, or the Dorian mode, or the Phrygian mode, though Phrygian mode is a bit iffy. Over a half diminished chord you can use the Locrian mode, or the half diminished mode. Over a dominant 7 you can use the Mixolydian scale, the Lydian dominant mode, the Mixolydian flat 6 scale, the altered scale, the Dorian flat 2 scale, the major pentatonic, the blues scale or the minor pentatonic, the 5th mode of the harmonic minor scale, the 5th mode of the harmonic major scale, the dominant bebop scale, the dominant diminished scale or the whole tone scale. But essentially, as you can see, as I've highlight, highlighted in the picture in picture, the reason you can use all of these scales is for the reason I stated earlier. Because all the scales that are listed there that fit over a dominant chord have a major third and a flat seventh. Therefore, the guide tones are there, the important notes are there. Therefore, that scale can quite easily fit over a dominant seven chord. Now, you can go back and rewatch this video and pause it and write down all the scales if you like. Um, and sort of try practicing with them and see how they sound. Um, but over the next few videos, I'm going to go over many of the scales listed in the picture and pictures that were just up here. Um, because essentially, they're not just random notes that people have plopped together that you can just sort of happen to sound good over a um, diminished chord or whatever. The scales listed are derived from existing scales, so things like the melodic minor or the harmonic minor or the harmonic major or the bebop scales, um, and they all have sort of an underlying theory or an underlying idea. And I think it's better to understand, for example, what an altered scale is and where it, and where it came from and what it's derived from, rather than just memorizing the notes in the altered scale and using it without really understanding what you're actually playing or why it fits or how it fits over the top of everything. And so I suppose in conclusion I hope you see now that even though a particular chord progression may be in a certain key, you can still play scales and chords from a different key over that same chord progression and have it sound good. Using different scales over a given chord produces a different sound, and what sounds good or bad to you is really subjective. Different jazz musicians prefer different sounds, and therefore play different scales. And there's no real correct scale to play over any particular chord in jazz. For example, some jazz musicians play the Locrian mode over a half diminished chord, while others play the half diminished mode over a half diminished chord, and neither the scale is more correct or more right. They both work perfectly fine over a half diminished chord because of the rules and ideas I explained earlier in this video, and they're really just different options that you can use to create a different sound. Cool, so I hope that all made sense. Um, again, feel free to leave any questions or comments, and thanks for watching. See you guys.